today we're going to take a look at this sweet rig that is the Ruger 556 and we're also going to take a look at the Burris 1 to 6 by 24 RT6 scope also the Firefield reflex sight and um, before we get into well let me let me preface this by saying I've already tried a number of scopes red dots reflex sights on this gun and I do believe I've arrived at what is that sweet rig for me anyways before we get into details I just thought we'd do a few fun facts a lot of you already know most of you probably already know that the of course the AR-15 is basically the civilian version of the military's M16 with a significant difference being that of course the M16 is fully automatic and the AR-15 semi-automatic now they call the AR-15, of course, America's favorite rifle, and it's it's that for a reason. It's this gun is extremely easy to maneuver. It's light. It's very low recoil. You know, it's not going to give you a punch in the arm when you shoot it. And I'll explain why that is. Let's take a look at the 5.56 round that this shoots. Now, for comparison reasons, let's put a 30 out 6 next to that. And now let's put a 22 long rifle next to that. So you can see that the 556 five, comparatively is a, you know, it's a lighter round. And now you're saying, well, why would the military issue a why would why would their go-to one of their go-to issue rifles fire such a light load? Well, for a number of reasons. The uh, Colt M16 got its introduction during the Vietnam War where the U.S. had a need to replace the aging M14. The main reason the U.S. military wanted to replace the M14 was because they needed a lighter, fully auto rifle to engage multiple targets much easier. Now, um, don't underestimate that round there in the middle because it's moving at up to 3,200 per second. I don't know if you know this, but that's flat out moving. Now, believe it or not, the diameter of the 5.56 and the 22 long rifle are roughly the same diameter. And if you don't believe me, okay, so obviously the 5.56 is going to have more snort. You got more powder there, and you're shooting it out of uh, AR-15. <laughs> so, don't underestimate that round. So there's, there's a number of reasons why, you know, militaries actually around the world started going to these shorter intermediate cartridges because they realized that conflicts were happening at, you know, closer, closer ranges, you know, 200, 300 yards. Also, more soldiers could qualify with this because there's there's so low recoil you can keep your your gun on target without recoil not you know knocking it off target so there's not as much you know muzzle rise that sort of thing so more soldiers could qualify with this you know, for accuracy also the 556 M16 the military wanted wanted this round to be able to penetrate both sides of a helmet I believe at 500 yards which it did so because of the low, the low recoil very easy to shoot and at 3200 feet per second you get that loud pop because you're breaking the sound barrier that's why when you shoot this thing it has such a great sound to it <laughs> it's it's awesome. And we'll go out in a little bit and shoot this, but the the audio on video doesn't really do it justice. You have to hear this thing in person. It's it's a great sound. You know, at 3,200 feet per second. You know, a lot of people say, well, the 5.56, it's uh, it was designed to maim and uh, disable and stop soldiers, and you know that might be true. But I guarantee. That if it hits you in the right spot, that will be lethal. As a matter of fact, even something like this, if that hits in the right spot, <laughs> will be lethal. You know, I wouldn't recommend 
I wouldn't rec <clears throat> recommend 22 long rifle for your go-to carry gun, you know. It doesn't cover enough situations, you know. What if you got three guys coming at you or something? I don't... But the point is, all these rounds are lethal if you hit the right spot. And with the rate of fire and the speed, with that 5.56 five, round, I mean, even if, uh, you know, one hits you in the leg or say the arm, you're not going to have a very good day. <laughs> so, and as far as the deer hunting thing goes, I know uh, some people, some people say that, I've, you know, I've heard both sides, but some people use it. I don't. I actually stick to the bigger calibers like 30 out 6 and 308. In my situation, I need my deer to drop now. <laughs> I don't. I don't own a 500 acre ranch. I can't. I don't want my deer running onto anybody else's property. I need them to drop now. So I don't mess around with that. But if 556 is legal in your state to hunt deer, more power to you. I know a lot of people say that you should use spire points. If you do 556, um, I like I say I've heard both sides of the story. There's there's one one YouTuber. Uh, that that says he says that five five six is devastating on deer and he's pretty well known and he's pretty well respected. So there's that side. And of course, there's, there's people say, oh, you should never use that for deer. That's for coyotes. There's different opinions. I just know that it's a joy to shoot, and basically I just use it for target shooting. We do. I do have coyotes out here, and. That would definitely be an option if I ever decided to <laughs> hunt those. But okay, so let's get into the details. You got your adjustable buttstock. You got your us usual fire and safe. You got your bolt release. You got your magazine release on the other side. You've got your 30 round magazine, 16 inch barrel, the 1 8 twist. Moving up, you see this true glow. That's just, I believe, a half-inch riser. That just makes it easier to get in, here, get in here to get the charging handle. So you're not banging your knuckles on the scope there. Now the Burris 1-6 to six power. It's got this really neat uh, handle here, I guess, for adjusting. And it, you can adjust the power pretty fast with this, and fast and smooth with this. Also... It features a PEPR mount. It's perfect for an AR or flat top mounting solution. It allows up to two inches of forward scope positioning, meaning you can move this back closer to the eyeball. Um, I, I could have moved this back further, but it, I wanted in order to fit this reflex, but it's just, just fine where it is. I mean, it works for me. Eye relief is, is good. It works for me. The PEPR mount provides optimum eye relief and full field of view includes both smooth and Picatinny ring tops. So I got the uh, Picatinny ring top so I could put the fire field on there. The Burris is a lighted rectangle, which we'll, I'll demonstrate. Now, fire field. The fire field was actually pretty inexpensive. I think it was somewhere, somewhere between 30 to I think 40 bucks at Poop Farm here in Fargo, uh, but it works. I mean, it's accurate. The windage and elevation hex adjustments are accurate. They feel good, they click, it works. So now, now you're about to find out that I truly am not affiliated with, with any of these companies and I'm gonna tell you exactly what I think here. Now this, this Burris scope, initially, I bought a combo with this scope and a Fast Fire 3 reflex sight on top of it, which I decided was not for me. Because let me tell you, that Fast Fire 3 is very small and I think chintzy. Um, it's very small and the, the threads are so microscopically fine. If you look at it wrong, if you, if you sneeze the wrong way, you're going to cross thread it. <laughs> That's how bad it is. Now I can just see it in the comments. Someone's going to say, well, you just, need a, you just need a clinic on how to 
how to how to screw in a fine thread. Well, let me let me tell you, this is it, it's bad. <laughs> I didn't like it. So I I originally got that combo scope shields here in Fargo. I didn't like that fast fire, so I actually brought the fast fire three back of shields, and I just got I just kept the scope, which is cool. And I went to Fleet Farm and just got this very inexpensive uh, fire field reflex, which works fine, which we will demonstrate. So gun retails for around 800 to 1,000. The Burris scope there by itself, around 400. The fire field, 30, 40 bucks. So you're looking at 14 or 1,500, somewhere in there for this rig. Now, if you decide you want to get the Burris combo scope, that's the the fast fire is I believe another 150 so you're looking at 16 1700 bucks now for this rig which is entirely up to you but I would I would recommend just get the Burris scope by itself and get the Picatinny rails you can again you can get the smooth or the Picatinny get the Picatinny that way you can mount the reflex sight of your choice on there so now this is kind of an aside um, but I kind of wanted to tell you what happened. This was my very first AR platform rifle that I got. And maybe this will help some of you out there that have problems with misfeeds or jam ups. So when I, when I purchased this gun, I took it, to, took it to my range, fired it, and I was having jam up and misfeeds right out of the box. And being a first-time AR owner, I didn't know what the world was going on. I didn't know if I was doing something wrong. You know, operator error. Was there something wrong with a gun? <clears throat> so I asked. I didn't know. I asked some some of my uh, gun enthusiasts what they thought. I think I had three different guys tell me three different things. One told me, make sure you clean it. Make sure the gas port is clean. So I did all that. Same thing, didn't fix anything. One guy said, well, it's under gas. You might have to send it back to Ruger. Someone else said, it's the bolt carrier. You gotta send it back to Ruger and they will replace the bolt carrier. So, I, I ended up sending it back to Ruger. And I know a lot of this sounds bad, but wait till the end of the story here. <laughs> Ruger actually did replace the bolt carrier. They sent it back. And they, they had a note in there that said that they, re, they replaced the bolt carrier. They fired, I think, 20 or 30 rounds consecutively without any malfunctions. And I thought, oh, goody, it's fixed now. So brought it back out to my range, fired it, same thing. So it was at that, at that point, I knew it had to be the ammo. So just be warned, it's not always the gun. Sometimes it is the ammo. Sometimes it is defective ammo. It does happen. I bought 500 rounds of 5.56 from a company online. I contacted them, explained the situation, and they they were pretty pretty cool about it. They 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 didn't even wait for me to send back the bad batch. They sent me another um, another box of 500. I fired it and it was fine. I didn't have any problems. No misfeeds. No jam ups. The bolt locked open at the end of the magazine like it's supposed to. I mean, it was, and I could I could tell right away when I shot it, the sound, it was way louder and there was more recoil. Not much more, but there it was, I could significantly tell there was a difference. So, problem solved. And um, they did tell me that the lot that, the, 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 first, the first batch of 500, they told me that the lot that they came from they think there might have been a problem with the sensor, so they didn't. They actually didn't get the uh, cartridge filled all the way up with powder or something along those lines. So there you go. Now time for the fun part. We'll go out and shoot.
There it is, a little more zoomed in. Here it is on the 6 power. Again, hard to focus on this. And of course you've got unlimited eye relief on the first, first setting, first power. No magnification though. And of course as you turn up the magnification to the 6 power you're going to get a little bit less. But it's still, still good eye relief. Probably about as good as I'm going to get it. Okay, red dot. Again, it's much clearer in person than this camera wants to make it out to be. All right, here we go. I'm just gonna shoot offhand with the reflex sight at 25 yards. All right, while well, I'm finishing up shooting the last round there, why don't I just go ahead and give you my final thoughts. The Ruger 556, I will give five out of five stars. It's that good. Yeah, you gotta run out and get one, seriously. <laughs> Awful lot of fun to shoot. The Burris scope, I'm gonna give four out of five. And with the Firefield, um, for the price that you pay for it, it works. It's great. So, that as well, I'm going to give 4 out of 5. Well, looks like I was hitting a bit high and to the left, but that's just a couple easy adjustments to where I'm hitting dead center. So that's about it. Hope you enjoyed the video. If this helped you decide what you're going to buy or not buy, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.